Guys, it's the real deal. Welcome to the channel. I'm an end game free to play player, and today we're going to be using my B team to take out Hydra Brutal. But just before we do that, I just want to show you my great hall and just show you how you should build it out. Um, so I would prioritize speed and accuracy first. Um, speed really important. The faster you are, the more damage, the better control, and if things get a bit sticky, you can revive and heal champions. So speed would be my first choice. Then I'd follow up by accuracy. So, um, you know, you get so much bang for your bucks right here. A level 10 gives you plus 80. That is almost a six star banner or chess piece on your, every single champion on your team. That's gonna help you land all your debuffs. That's provokes, block debuffs, HP burn, all that good stuff. Just so important. And that's definitely wants to be your second choice. Resistance is really good as well. Again, the same as accuracy, almost plus 80. Like, like again, like having a, a resistance banner on every single champion. This is going to help you resist all those nasty debuffs that the Hydra Head throws out, like the weakens, the poisons, provokes, all that nasty stuff. Being able to resist that is going to give you such better survivability. Um, after that, if you're struggling with survivability, then I would go HP and defense. Um, if you want to do more damage and you're comfortable, then ignore defense and crit damage. Ignore defense is going to give every single champion on your team more damage, and that's going to give you a better chance of getting that one key on the Hydra Head. Uh, crit damage will only benefit your damage dealers like Husk, like Royal Guard, and other champions that are, you know, that are based like on enemy max HP and stuff like that. Um, but it's still, it's very, very good, but I'll definitely choose ignore defense because it's going to help every single champion do more damage on your team. So let's check out the team that we're running. And again, like I said, it's my B team. Um, so we've got Uko, Elva, Bivald, Cantra, Sissia, and Husk. Um, I'll talk you through every single champion's role during the fight. Um, and also to mention, uh, the first time I did this, it was I did it manual and I got about 45 mil. So we're going to try a full auto today, see if we can just uh, do it full auto and I'll let you know how it goes at the end of the run. Um, but yeah, so for the AI, Uko has some of the worst AI in the game. It's really annoying actually to make sure that that's the first choice. Um, but yeah, for some reason, the A3 is so strong and Uko just wastes it all the time. I wish they'd reprogram this. So it would help gain a full auto run on Hydra. Um, but yeah, so basically she'll just, I mean, he'll just like proc it all the time. Um, but ideally, you, you know, when someone dies, you want to save um, his A3 to revive all those champions. Such a strong AOE uh, revive as well. Um, Elva, so good. Um, you can lock out her A2 if you find you have problems where the Head of Mischief keeps stealing um, her A, you know, the block block debuffs and spread it across the team because that can be really annoying. Um, so you can lock that out. Uh, Bivald, we want just the A2 and the A1 because we want to try it and keep that head of cleansing provoked for the entire fight. Then we've got Cantra. Um, don't really need to do it, but I've just done it anyway. Just wanted to prioritize the A2. Um, Sissia is a strange one. As, again, terrible AI. Um, for some reason, she, you know, her A3 should always go first because she throws out HP burn. And if you have HP burn, you can land decreased defense and also activates a HP burn, which means we do more damage. I don't know why they make it so she opens with her A2 and always prioritize the A2. You want A3, then A2, just makes sense. And with Husk, his A3 is pretty awful. So we want to lock that out, make sure that he only uses his uh, A2 first, doing that max enemy hp damage and again another provoker another backup provoke so we want to try and get as many provokes we can with our husk as well so that's the team uh and yeah let's just let the run go and see what happens so i'll just talk you through each champion's role uh, we'll start with um uko so uko's in here for block debuffs one of the strongest um debuffs in the game it stops poison cloud um, and it stops the head of mischief, you know, spreading those debuff, uh, sorry, those buffs that it steals from your team. So strong, uh, really, really important. 
also throws out a decreased attack as well. And we need that to keep the um, Head of Wrath under wraps. So yeah, really, really important. Uko can be replaced by any other champion that does um, do block debuffs as well for this team comp. Um, next up, we got Sissia and Husk. So both of them are damage dealers. Sissia is bringing HP burn. She's bringing out decreased defense and weaken. So that's going to help us do loads more damage. But she can be replaced by any champion that's just going to do... Like Husk and Sissia, both of them are replaceable. Any champion that's going to do a lot of damage can just sit in both their spots. Um, but, you know, Sissia, she is top-notch and she can be used in Nightmare as well. Uh, she does have a very specific build, so I will show you that later. Um, Husk, again, you know, Royal Guard could fill his shoes. But it's just anyone, again, that's just going to do a lot of damage can fill their spots. In, to be to be honest, in my opinion, the support champions are so much more important than your damage dealers. The support champions just, you know, damage dealers, they're a dime a dozen. But support champions, they really like hold the team together and do a lot for you. Um, so then we've got um, Cantra, great champion. She's basically in here just for a backup provokes and we are throwing out loads of debuffs. So that means that her passive is going to work and we are going to get those um, provokes on the head of cleansing but yeah she's a great champion and also she in her passive as well she will um basically the more debuffs you have on a, a hydra head it lowers their accuracy as well so again that means we have a better chance of not being you know having nasty debuffs put onto us uh bivoud um again he's just in here for provoke um and i've got him in a, a toxic set so he's thrown out Loads of poisons, helping us do a little bit more damage to all the Hydra heads. Also brings in a leech as well, which is going to help heal up the team. Um, and then we've got Elva, one of my favorite champions for Hydra. Um, this high, um, this um, Elva, I've actually got a built. She doesn't quite cut it for this rotation of um, Hydra Nightmare. However, I do use her in Hydra Nightmare for a lot of rotations. She is such a great champion. She's so good. Um, she brings um, heals, cleanses, a single target revive. Um, again, she has a very unique build, but, you know, she just, yeah, basically you want it to be really, really fast. She's just going to throw out loads of continuous heals on her A1, A2, cleanse, and um, increase speed buff as well. She's doing so much, and her A2 and A3 are on really uh, low cooldowns as well. And the A3 is a single target revive but it's on like a three turn cooldown. And if you build her the way that I've got a built, that doesn't matter because she just cycles so quickly. It's almost like it doesn't even have a cooldown. So that's pretty much the team. Let's look through, well, actually let's get to the end of the run and then we'll check out gear and masteries. And we're back guys. So Hydra Brutal, 31.8 million damage. Uh, it did end up being a full auto run in the end. Uh, the only thing I had to do is make sure that we uh, targeted the head of cleansing. Uh, otherwise, Bill Vowd would, for some reason, target the Head of Wrath, and you don't want that to happen. It means that, you know, the Head of Wrath is going to turn around and smack you a lot more. But also, we need to keep the Head of Cleansing under wraps. We need to keep it under control. So we need provokes on it. So that means that Bill Vowd, Cantra, and Husk, all three of them are going to do that with provokes. So really, really important. But like I said, you can manual this, and I managed to get 40 or you can even get like 45 mil if you really want to try. Um, but, you know, we still got the one key, though. That's what's important. And look at the, some of these numbers. I mean, Cantra, that's really surprising. 60, well, 6.2 mil damage off her. You know, she brings a lot of utility, so I'm surprised she did so much damage. Uh, Sissia, 12 million. Not surprised at all, but very, very good numbers. And then Husk, 9.4 mil as well. Uh, Elva, 2.6 million healing She's solo Caroline on the healing front. Uh, but Vivald has done a little bit. You can see Cantra and Husk have both managed to heal off that leech. Uh, but yeah, that's enough about the, the run, guys. Let's check out the builds and the masteries. First on the list, we've got Sissia, and she's in Reflex and Speed. Uh, Reflex is going to reduce uh, our cooldowns on skills by one turn. So that's going to help us cycle through our A3 and A2 faster, meaning we can do more damage. Um, so she's got HP gloves, HP chest, uh, speed on the boots, HP on the ring, 
HP on the amulet and then accuracy on the banner. So again, it's all about survivability with her. So that's why we're stacking HP. Uh, we've got a decent amount of defense on her as well. Uh, pretty fast as well. And then accuracy 354. So those are the key stats on her. Uh, Brimstone is amazing on Sissia. Uh, because she does a lot of AoE, there's a good chance we're going to land that Brimstone and do loads of damage with Smite. Um, Mastery, she has really specific ones. So we've got defense just to help us give survivability and all the way down into cycle revenge. Again, you know, we have a good chance of uh, increasing our turn meter by 15%. Um, this means, you know, again, we're going to be even faster. We can do more damage and just cycle through those abilities. Um, Arcane Celeratory is another one that is going to help us with our turn meter. Uh, again, cycle magic, just have that. 5% chance of reducing the skills cooldown. You've got to take Master Hexa. We want to increase the duration of our HP burn, our decreased defense, and our weaken. And then Oppressor is really going to, again, this is going to um, you know, help increase the fill rate of our turn meter by 10%. That is huge. And again, she throws out so many debuffs, we are going to be super, super fast. Next on the list, we've got Uko. So... This Uko is built for Arena. Um, we've got a stun set and speed. Um, the best set, I think, in my opinion now is Curse because you can throw out, you've got a 50% chance of throwing out Hex. That Hex will help you do more damage to every single head, but also it means you can target the head of Mischief and take that out really quick, especially if he eats a champion as well, which is super annoying. Um, but yeah, so like I said, this is my B team and this isn't how you should build um you know your uko but i'll show you the gear anyway so ideally you know because this is for arena the substats that are important are speed and accuracy ideally that'd be hp on the gloves uh accuracy on the chest speed on the boots hp on the ring hp on the amulet and then accuracy on the banner i will quickly show you how my properly built hydra um uko is built so this is before Curse got um, a massive buff, but Reflex is really good as well because he's only got, um, well, three three abilities, but you know these two are the ones that can have the cooldown reduce and we want to keep block debuffs up as much as possible. So gloves, chest, boots, ring, amulet, and banner. So stats, we've got 57k HP, 2.8, K defense, 245 speed, and then 313 accuracy. Um, if I had to choose a blessing, it would be um, Brimstone again, just because every single ability has AoE hits. Again, really good chance of landing Smite and just doing loads of damage. Um, very generic masteries, just a bit of support, um, well, survivability in the defense tree, and then offense just all damage into Warmaster and Life Drink as well, just to help us keep our HP topped up. So then if we go back up, um, Cantra is next on the list. So she's really good in a Relentless set. It just means that she can cycle through abilities quicker and throw out all these lovely um, debuffs on her A2. So we've got HP on the gloves, defense on the chest, speed on the boots, uh, defense on the ring, HP on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. Um, HP, defense, speed, um, crit rate's quite nice as well. You can get a bit of crit rate, so you can do some more damage, and then accuracy. Um, yeah, blessing. She doesn't have to have brimstone. I just put it in there at the time. This is like a really old build, um, but it's still good enough to get that one key for brutal. But yeah, she doesn't really need a blessing. It doesn't benefit her loads, but I just put that in there just to help. Again, this is like very generic masteries. And the only important thing to note is Master Hexer because she does throw out a lot of useful um, debuffs. Then it's uh, Bivald. So yeah, mine's in a Toxic set and Speed. And yeah, Toxic just helps him do a bit of damage. I don't think it's the best to be honest, again, I'd probably put Curse on this guy or uh, Provoke set 
Just another chance to keep the heads under control. Got um, HP on the gloves, accuracy on the chest, speed on the boots, defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. Uh, yeah, Brimstone, really nice name. So yeah, Brimstone is definitely worth putting on uh, Bivald. And again, these mastery is pretty generic. Just survivability with counterattacks in the defense tree. And let's see. Elvar is next on the list. So Elvar, one of my favorite champions. Um, this is such a good build that she's in. And um, we've got regen and um, protection set. So she's getting a bit of extra resistance and a bit more HP. So we've got HP on the gloves. These aren't the best gloves. Would love them to have more rolls in speed and resistance. Uh, we got a really nice resistance chest with triple roll in speed. Uh, speed on the boots. Defense ring with a triple roll in HP. Um, HP amulet with uh, resistance as uh, substats. And then resistance on the banner. So total stats, we've got 68k HP. Um, 3k defense, 279 speed, and then 498 resistance. Um, this build is so good that she can actually be used in, I use her in arena as well, even for live arena. Uh, she can go up against Tormund. Obviously, if you specifically wanted her for arena, you might want to bump out that resistance even more, or you could put her in stone skin as well, but she gets the job done for me and, you know, I'm fighting like a high level. Uh, she doesn't need books in Array 1. Um, you know, she doesn't do that much damage. She's not a damage dealer. She's a healer. Uh, blessings, if I had to choose one, I would probably um, just take Lightning Cage. Just because she's got so much resistance, if she gets targeted, you know, it means that the Head of Mischief, she can tank it. And the Masteries, these Masteries are a thing of beauty. Really, really unique masteries on her and probably the best masteries in my opinion for her. So in support, we're not going down the accuracy standard route. We're going for HP. We're going for anything that's going to help us with healing. Um, and this is also going to help with turn meter as well. But she's super, super fast. Uh, lasting gifts is great on her because she throws out loads of heals, block debuffs and speed. Um, Spirit haste is good as well. So if anyone does die, you know, we can increase our speed up to 24. And then timely intervention as well. This is amazing. So if anyone's HP um, drops below 25%, that is going to boost her 10 meter by 20%. So for Arena, that means that she can cut in and revive a champion or put out block debuffs really, really strong. Or um, for Hydra, it just means that you can just cycle through your abilities faster and just revive and heal really, really strong. And again, we're taking Cycle Revenge just to help increase her turn meter speed and she's just so fast and she can just you know all of her abilities on super low cooldown we're super fast we are just cycling through like an absolute machine just such a beast um but yeah such such a great champion so good um and then last on the list we've got husk so we're actually using my number two built husk so you can see this is a terrible build um you know but Husk doesn't need like the best gear. He just needs the stats. Um, so we've got crit damage on the gloves, HP on the chest, speed on the boots, HP on the ring, crit damage on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. Um, total stats, we've got 67k HP, um, 221 speed, 100% crit rate, 240 crit damage, and then 285 accuracy. Accuracy is nice on him, just as a backup on his A1. He can provoke the Head of Cleansing if you want to use it as a backup. Uh, yeah, Crossing Rend is a great blessing on him. It's just going to help do more damage. And then, yeah, again, just really, really standard masteries on him, to be honest. Um, going down into War Masters and just getting counterattacks in the defense tree. What I will do as well is I'm going to show you how my number one husk is built. So he's built in really good gear. Um, Relentless is amazing on Husk. 
um, just means that you can circle, you know, like basically you just get extra turns and you can just get, you know, because this is quite a long cooldown, um, you know, four turns for this big hitting ability. And this does like, I don't know, anywhere between 500k um, damage to like one mil, depending on situation. But, you know, you can pump out loads of damage with this. So putting them in relentless set means that you can cycle around faster and just try and get as many A2s out as possible. And also, we were lucky enough to get Deathstroke as well, so you can do more crit damage and more speed. But yeah, this one is just, this is like, if you can, this is a sick build, and this is the way you should go. Um, if not, you know, Husk doesn't need amazing gear to get the job done. He really, really doesn't. But anyway, if you've made it through to the end of the video, guys, well done. Thank you for watching. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.